Hi. In this project, we'll emphasize the implementation of physical circuits. In general, engineers represent circuits as schematics. These are diagrams which represent the circuit components and their interconnections symbolically. Sometimes, though, it can be difficult to see how to create the physical circuit that corresponds to the schematic. In this project, I'll try to give you a few tips relative to creating physical circuits based on a schematic representation of the circuit. The approach I'll outline is just one way to convert schematics to physical circuits. It's not the only way, so I encourage you to experiment and find what works for you. One thing you don't want to do is remain confused about how to implement a circuit. Creating a circuit which has nothing to do with the one you're trying to create probably counts as one of the most frustrating activities you can engage in. Creating a circuit that's represented in schematic form can be a confusing process, especially if the circuit's a complicated one. The approach I'm going to show you here is just one possible way to go about this. In my experience, it tends to work for most people. One drawback to using the method I'm using here is that it's what educators would probably call rigorous. That mostly means that it always works, but it can be pretty tedious. Chances are that as you get more experience in wiring circuits, you'll get a more intuitive feeling for how to create circuits from schematics. The process will get a lot easier and you'll develop your own approaches. The approach I'll show you for implementing circuits relies heavily on being able to identify circuit nodes. There's some background information for this project that describes circuit nodes. If what I'm doing here isn't making sense to you, some extra time spent with that material may help. Being able to identify nodes will not only be useful when creating circuits, but it's also very important when analyzing circuits mathematically. Time spent now understanding this topic will pay off big time later. Anyway, here's the approach in a nutshell. First, identify the circuit nodes on your schematic. Nodes are just a point at which two or more circuit components are interconnected. Choose nodes on your breadboard which will correspond to the nodes on the schematic. Each row of five holes on the breadboard can be a node, so a breadboard node can connect up to five components. Plug the components indicated on the schematic into their corresponding nodes on the breadboard. This process is probably best explained by doing an example, so I'll work through the circuit from our project. Here's a schematic of the circuit we want to implement. We're going to want to measure the current I out of the source and the voltage V across this resistor. The first thing we need to do is identify nodes in the circuit. The voltage measurement doesn't affect our selection of nodes. It can be connected without affecting the circuit. But to measure a current, we'll need to insert our ammeter between the source and the 10 kilo ohm resistor. So here's the circuit we'll actually implement. One important thing to keep in mind is that there is no one correct physical circuit that corresponds to this schematic. There are a bunch of ways you can implement this circuit and still have it be correct. I'll show you one way, but if you do it differently, that doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. If your measured voltages and currents are the same as what I get, you're probably okay. First, identify the circuit nodes. I'll call this node A, this will be node B, this will be my node C, and this will be node D. Now we probably need to decide how we want to implement the source. We have a variety of ways we can use the analog discovery to apply a 5 volt difference. The voltage instrument, V plus and V minus, will give us 5 volts, and the waveform generator can also create a constant 5 volt difference. We can choose any of these. Remember that the analog discovery sources all apply a voltage difference relative to the discovery's ground. The choice of source and where we apply ground to our circuit are related. I'll use V plus to implement the 5 volt source. Since I need a positive voltage at node A relative to node D, I'll put V plus at node A and ground at node D. Now let's create this circuit using our breadboard. First, let's choose the four nodes. Our only requirement is that each node needs to be in a different row in the breadboard. I'll just insert these connectors in the rows I choose to keep my place and make it easier for me to find my nodes later. I'll make this node A, this will be node B, this is node C, and here's node D. Now I'll connect my power supply. V plus, the red wire, goes into node A, 
and ground, the black wire, connects to node D. Now I'll connect my resistors. A 10 kilo ohm resistor goes between nodes B and C. And two 20 kilo ohm resistors connect nodes C to D. Now I just need to connect my measurements. My ammeter probes connect nodes A and B. And channel one of my voltmeter will be used to measure the voltage difference between nodes C and D. One plus goes in node C, and one minus, the orange wire with the white stripe, goes into node D. I've got the voltmeter and voltage instruments already open. I turn on power with the voltage instrument. The voltage displayed on the voltmeter is about 2.5 volts, and the current displayed on the DMM is 0.25 milliamps. Before doing the video, I secretly calculated that these are the values I should get, so it looks like the circuit's implemented correctly.